Well, I guess just my number one question is, is why is everyone so mad at my guy Jarvis Landry? Can mm. somebody fill me in on this? Is he like, is he just crushing everybody's wives or something? Like what? <laughs> What in the world is going I'd on? I'd let him have sex with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. People just want to hate. People are haters, man. People just want to be upset. They I'm just still wanna, trying to sort this mess out because I don't. People I just, aren't happy in their everyday lives. They just like to throw shade I to make themselves so. I, feel better. I, I mean, think that's it. Maybe is it the metrics guys just really can't figure this guy out? They well, don't want him to be good. Well, he isn't sure. supposed to be good. <laughs> He, uh, how could it be? How is he doing what he should? He shouldn't be doing what he's doing right now. Regression, regression. A dot. It's the A dot. <laughs> they don't know what to do with it. They can't. They just can't figure this guy out. Or maybe it's just a bunch of dudes who got on board with with Jarvis isn't any good out of the draft there, and and have just been just going down with the ship. I I really I can't tell you, but it's just more for us. I know everyone yeah. hears into him. Like I'll, I'll take him wherever you guys don't want him. And I'll see you probably in the playoffs. Right. Because we talked about it with the other guys here. Like, he's averaging 15 points a game. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, the uh, argument... What else, are you, what else are you wanting out of the player that you... Especially this year, they, because of the injury to Tannehill, everyone was like, oh, we don't know who it's going to be. Jarvis Landry dropped down in the rankings all of a sudden. So you got a diamond in the rough, maybe sure. fourth, fifth round this year. I mean, usually right. he's hanging out in the third. Yeah. But... I'll take him in any of those spots. Exactly. Well, the argument that's made for he's OSHA against approved. Him. He is OSHA approved. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> <laughs> he is safe. Yeah, I mean that. The, so that's the argument against him in fantasy was that he he's only good in fantasy because it was volume driven, and that that would was definitely going to go down with Mister Dink and Duck Tannehill not in there, right? And then the fact that Adam Gase offense supposedly doesn't need a slot wide receiver, like those are air quotes there. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a, a thing, and 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 like and what did he do this year? Like he just he topped his his best uh, receptions, like which led the league at 112, right? Which bested his 111 a couple of years ago, and like another knock is that he's never topped five touchdowns and that, that he doesn't score touchdowns. Well, then he goes out this year and gets nine of them. Yeah. So you're telling me there's a dude here with the consistent hundred plus catches, a thousand plus yards, and now his touchdown ceiling is on the rise. Sign me up. Like, can we all just jump on board? This dude is good. Like, the A dot doesn't freaking matter, especially. I'm sure there are certain times when it matters. Especially but. if you're crushing Yak, which he's like seventh overall in the league with yards after the catch. He almost more than doubled his yardage with yardage after the catch. And he's up there in a list. There's only two wide receivers in the list of the top seven, and it's him and Golden Tate. And exactly. then it's like the best running backs in the league exactly. who crush right. Yak. Well, exactly. that's I mean, me and Big Cove talked about this multiple times. He is a 2017 running back at the wide receiver position, right? And just runs nasty, uh, angry, he's, violent. He's, he's everything you want, and in his role, he is great at playing his role. He plays it to a T, and just like you said, the Yak is great. Like he can move the chains for your squad. He can keep your squad on the on the field, therefore garnering himself more opportunities to get the football. Right, right. right. Well, the thing about that, all right, let's go back to the A dot for a second. <laughs> can we not? No, no, because <laughs> the big the biggest thing about A dot is the last part is target. Okay? Mm. When you 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 could talk about lack of average depth if you want to, but I want to talk about the targets. And Jarvis Landry is crushing targets. Continually he's crushing targets. Crushing receptions. And in the game that we play called fantasy football. In PPR. All, in, PPR in PPR. We should preface this whole conversation with PPR. One of the yeah. big, Jar Jarvis PPR Landry is, bust. Jarvis Landry's probably the biggest mover. Him and Julian Edelman are the biggest movers in PPR. But, you know, and that stat comes across Twitter where Jarvis Landry is as his catches and his yardage total being right around a thousand yards and it had Julian Edelman and, and Larry Fitzgerald Fitz. and just seasons, Derek Mason. seasons that are very covetable in fantasy football. Yeah. So you got somebody like Jarvis Landry who's catching all this hate, but at the same time, all Jarvis Landry's doing is catching passes each and every week. He didn't have not one week this year, not one week in the season under five catches. So not one week in this season did hey, he I leave had you. that stat too. He did not he did not leave you under ten points, not one single time. But here's what I really love about Jarvis Landry and his consistency. He had the same about right at the same amount, one more point for the year than Julio Jones, and they both averaged Jarvis Landry averaged fifteen point nine nine points a week. Julio averaged fifteen point nine. We all know how frustrating it was to have Julio in our lineup every week this year. He had a 50-point game bringing up that average to 15.9. But what I love about Landry is he didn't have one game over 22 points. 
It's not like he blew up two weeks for 30, right. and then every other week he had you guessing. Jarvis Landry put up 15.99 points on average every single week, and it was roughly right around there, 16 almost every week. He might have given you a 12 or 13, and he gave you an 18 or a 19, but he was giving you 20, 16 points a week every single week, and that consistency, that say, I, when I was put, I got a couple teams with Landry, and when I'm putting my lineups together every single week, Landry does not have to move around. He's, right. a, he's sitting up there. You don't have to there. worry about the matchup. He's you sit- don't have to worry about Homer away. He's blah, moved blah, blah, blah. his way up out of my consistent fl- in my in my teams with Landry last year. He was my number one flex option every week. Well, guess what he did this year? He goes up. He's my number one or number two wide receiver option every week. I don't even. <laughs> I'm not even flipping him around in my flex anymore. He he's just he's there for my team. Every single week. And mm. like you were saying, it's basically an extended handoff. The way the NFL's moving, the way you want to try to run. You, some teams just need to move the chains. Right. Not everybody is going to be out there like Aaron Rodgers and throw 50-yard touchdown bombs and all that. Fine, and find Jordy somehow every week consistently. Landry was a safety net for a team that's had huge issues trying to move the ball. And that 15.99 points a week, that's top. I mean... You to to get out of that area to get out of that average, you have to start talking about Odell Beckham, DeAndre DeAndre Hopkins, and Antonio Brown are the only players that averaged anywhere above that fifteen. Even Keenan Allen and Larry Fitzgerald and Michael Thomas are at sixteen, which is point six away from Jarvis Landry. Right. So give my man some respect, or like you said, stay off the wagon, and we'll keep drafting him. Right. I'm I'm fine with that. I mean, this is this is a guy who does everything you want him to do out of the slot position. And he probably could do more, but he, like I said, he plays his role to he a He plays team. his right. role. And he's, he's, he's really hard to jam off the line. He's got extremely good balance. He's great after the catch. He's really hard to tackle. Like well, he's so fuck. He's so feisty. Right. Like Byron Maxwell. He just wants it more than you want it. Right. Nine times out of 10. Right. Byron Maxwell was, was saying on the top 100, I was watching Jarvis Landry's clip too. He said, uh, one thing he always has on his mind that he's like always saying to himself is to kill everything moving. Yeah. Right. So that comes from like the Jay Z Hard Knock song where he's like, "If my situation ain't improving, I'm about to murder anything moving." Right. And like that's his mentality in the open field is 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 to to run kind of violent. He does. But he also has like the juke and jive. He's like got he can grace stop with on the a violence. dime. Yeah. Like there's literally times where I think he's like literally stopped to let a guy go by and then cut up the field like right. or he'll cut five times in a row if he has to but he's just dancing around sometimes and, and, but but he can run you over and if you look at the metrics and all the stuff on Jarvis Landry speed and all that other stuff like they don't jump off the page he, they, nothing jumps off the page at you but when, when you, you put watch the game on the tape field. on it jumps off the page how quick and fast this guy actually sure. really is right yeah and the, the, exactly the, let's let's put a bow on that part about the metrics and why Jarvis Landry the metric people are like he shouldn't be good Dude, the metrics don't tell you anything about effort, and I like the people. The metric people don't want to hear about effort. They want to. They don't want to talk about narrative. They don't want to talk about coaches. They don't want to talk about schemes. But here's what we got. We talked about wide receiver dependency and quarterbacks when we were talking about Stephon Diggs. Go back and check that out. What what? <laughs> again, we're trying to score fantasy football points. We are playing a game, a made up game on a computer, based on a game that's awesome. That these based 20, on a game, based on a real game, and this real game has eleven people fighting against 11 other people. Right. So there's 22 players running around cracking heads, all right? So we're trying to play a game on a computer off of this game, and you, there's not much you can really figure out about consistency in the NFL. And when you find somebody like Jarvis Landry that's going to consistently, consistently get you catches and touchdowns and points, and if it's, I don't care about the average depth target. Right. Get that out of here. Landry's a good he, there's nothing you can do. You can't come up with any. You can't tweak any numbers that tell me Landry's not a good football player. Right. And, and I'm I'm not mad at you. The metric people like I, some of that stuff. I kind of am. Some of that fun. Some of that stuff's fun to look no, at. I and love it's, a, and it's an interesting thing. And you know, if, if things are really tight for you, yeah. And and, and you're really like uh, struggling to put this guy over this guy, and you see a metric that that you like and you relate to, and you think that that's you know that's fine if that's how you want to break your. Your close calls sure. and all that stuff, but you just can't. You can't just go out there and be like, "Oh, well, this here's my here's what my computer and my agri- algorithm says," right? And, and all this other like, there's tw- just like there's 22 guys on the field. There's so much imperfection going on. There's you just cannot control 
you're any dead, of that. You're dead right about that. And I've 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 been guilty, especially the last couple of weeks, because some of it's starting to pile up and make me aggravated. But I've been I've been guilty about just lumping all the metric guys together and and finding oh, out and and telling you why it makes me mad. But you're right. Tons of good metrics I, guys. I'm there. not a big Twitter guy, but I will retweet something cool when I see it. I love a good stat. I love funky stats. Keep pumping them out. It's just don't use these funky stats as a way to be out. As the come, gospel, to, Bo. It's don't the come, gospel. Don't come at no me. Hate Adam Schefter. Don't take your game logs and and your and your forty speed and and, and your targets and your depth. That don't come up with some fancy algorithm that to tell me the guy that's been in the top twenty four of his entire career PPR points has only gotten better every single year and come out here and tell me he's not good. Right. Because your computer is broken. Yeah. Like, you know. I don't You're not accounting like, for things that you can't account for. Right. You've been hacked, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> you got a virus. It's just and it's, it's Jarvis Landry. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, nice. same just, average of points as Julio Jones this year. And Julio, like, and I don't want Julio Jones. I didn't want Julio Jones on my team this year because, like you said, those he has these monster games and then he kills you. The volatility, week in, week the volatility. Out, Jarvis will make gives you, pull, you yes. so, those 15 points actually every week. Right. Kills you. And that's why end, when we were talking about Tyree Kill and Diggs, and I was like, if you put me on the clock right now, I might just have to take Brandry. Right. And, and the fact of the matter of that, you know, he was always a low touchdown kind of guy this year you see him explode mm. with touchdowns now maybe touchdowns are fluky which mm-hmm. is is certainly you know a thing touchdowns come and go or whatnot but this it always struck me as odd just like a digs just like all these other guys that we're talking about it but especially a landry this guy operates extremely well in a 10 yard window yeah he should crush red zone targets yeah. like there's i saw some i don't even know who it was but somebody was like oh jarvis landry is just relying on being schemed open no he's the exact opposite of that right, right. they don't like, want to like gadam gase is on record saying he's tried to scheme throws not to go to landry and landry still gets the ball thrown at him because he's freaking open all the time right he's he's a he's a new he's age the, he's the safety valve for a quarterback this big any quarterback any not quarterback. just ryan Tannehill. but that's what i'm saying but who is ryan Tannehill, right and who is ryan Tannehill's replacement and who is the backup that who had to cares? come in after landry he got might hurt? Not, they haven't that's, paid landry he might not even be in miami but, i don't care send him anywhere my point is you got a guy like Julian Edelman whose name was made because of Tom Brady, and you got a guy whose name is Jarvis Landry who's done the exact same thing that we were praising Fawning Edelman over, for. Fawning over We him. praised Edelman for what he could do catches-wise for our fantasy team, and now people want to throw tomatoes at Jarvis Landry. This man, you know why Diggs and Jarvis Landry and these cats haven't been really good in the red zone while they were 22, 23, 24 years old? Because when did you see a good efficiency rating in the red zone out of Ryan Tannehill and Sam Bradford and Case Keenum and whoever the hell else has been throwing these guys to football? The fact that these boys are doing what they're doing with below average quarterbacks only means to me that if somebody can grab a hold of a quarterback for one of these cats, their ceiling gets taller. Like Jarvis Landry is out there catching balls like you say, he's averaging 100 catches a year, and you and you can say that there's guy the other guy on the table is going to be like, well, he caught 100 balls because Ryan Tannehill had to throw him the ball. Right. Of course he did. But as a 22, 23, 24 year old man, he's out there getting open in space against guys that want to take his head off, catching those passes from a, a below average quarterback. And anything in the future above that is a bonus. Yeah, it's a bonus because it's about what, to be. It's about think, to be. A I, bonus. I don't think it'll be, I don't. I don't know that they'll. Like, why wouldn't they have already extended anyway. him if they were going to keep him? So maybe he's somewhere else next year. I'd give it a better than 50-50 shot. So, um, I, I, I mean, when, I, I wouldn't mind if I kind of want him to stay in in, yeah. in with Adam Gase. Like and, and those, got, if yeah. yeah, if he's if he'll stop I mean, He could being, obviously go somewhere else and, and crush, but I, I like his current situation. I don't but, see how Miami lets him go. All that chatter in the offseason, and we got the guy behind you and, and whatever. We got, we're going to replace Jarvis Landry. You know what that didn't happen was Devontae Parker didn't become awesome. Yeah, we're Jarvis still waiting Lane, on that. We're still waiting on that. Now, he and, did have a high ankle sprain. Well, exactly. And he, so and, I'm usually against the injuries and, here. I'm going to use that as injuries, defense for him. Injuries here. and quarterback turnover and all that stuff, it, that's, it just happens. Fantasy football is based on stuff that happens on a field with a bunch of guys running around trying to kill each other. So right. when you can find somebody like Jarvis Landry who stays healthy and catches balls for your fantasy yeah. team every week, Put him on your team. Don't let him go. Maybe, Don't trade him. Maybe it's maybe the nine touchdowns are a fluky kind of thing, and maybe he goes back down to four or three again next year. But or maybe you just got a guy who works extremely hard because he wants to be better, wants to be the best, and you just saw an emergence of him just 
continuing to get better and better at perfecting his craft. Right. I was watching uh, him mic'd up on sound effects or whatever, and he's out there schmoozing it up with the refs. Like, right. yeah. hey, how's the, how's the wife and kids doing? You know, he's like, and, and then like, he's the game. talking to him Playing throughout the game. the game about what they need to do in this offensive situation. And, and he's like, man, we need a touchdown here. And the ref's like, or maybe like a nice six minute drive. And he's like, yeah, that too. <laughs> and, and, but he's just out there schmoozing refs so that he can maybe get a call, go his way at some point in the game for his team. Mm-hmm. He's just, he's, he's smart. He will not be denied, and he wants to yeah. be the best. Like he strives for that every day. It drives him. Like right. watch interviews. You know, he comes from LSU, and he's got that Odell Beckham. He wants I to be, be better the than best. Odell Beckham. Right, right. And we're boys. Right, and and like I guess the only knock that you maybe could have on Jarvis Landry that I would listen to is that maybe sometimes he one handed catches the ball when he. Might not need to. <laughs> yeah, well. Like, come on. You could have got two ball, two hands on that ball. But whatever. I mean, he makes a catch. Right. So, And sometimes it comes in really handy when you're getting that hand pulled and, and you can do it with the other hand. You know, he's out there practicing that before the yeah. games and stuff. I'm going to hammer it home again with you. Uh, uh, like, I don't... I think that the tenacity and, and the way he plays this game after the catch and that balance that he has... And I think running back after he catches something it. Not something that you can measure and it's just... Right. He wants it more than you nine times out of ten and that's what makes him so good. Yeah, well, you can measure it in yak yardage, and he had 511 of those. Yeah. So sign me up for Jarvis Landry. You don't want him. Ship him to me. Yeah. We'll take a couple miles. We'll take all the Jarvis Landry miles you got to offer, Bo. We'll yeah. take a couple miles. All right. Miles. Well, I think that'll put a bow on Jarvis Landry. Let's get out of here. You've been listening to Married to the Game.